Oh, hi. You caught me in the middle of my workout. You know what else I like to do in my free time? A mental workout. That brings me to this lovely experiment we have right here. In 1923, Arthur Compton argued that if light is quantized, then one can observe that scattered gamma rays will have a longer, greater wavelength than the incident ones. This is based on the idea that if photons have energy, <clears throat> they should also carry momentum. And as such, they should undergo scattering collisions just like a particle. An example. This is an electron. Here you have a gamma ray coming in at an incident wavelength. It collides and scatters just like a particle would at some greater wavelength. Now let's go into our little bit, our experimental apparatus here. We can see that contained within this lead unit, we have a cesium-137 source, highly radioactive. You don't want to remove this because it might hurt you. There is an aperture here that collimates it into an aluminum rod, much like this one here. Now aluminum is good because it has a lot of extra electrons in its valence band that can be ejected. Those are then projected onto this scintillator, which detects any time a gamma ray hits it. Now that produces a voltage pulse. That voltage pulse is then channeled into an amplifier, and that amplifier then produces a signal, which we can see on our oscilloscope, as well as being recorded on our multi-channel analyzer for data acquisition later. And time. Okay, so as Jeremiah said, we get voltage pulses from our scintillator here that go through the amplifier. And what we have to do first before we can actually take any data is calibrate this. So what we do is we take these lead bricks, put them in front of the source, and then we'll place a weak cesium source here. And we know that it's got gamma rays coming in at about the same energy as the uh, cesium source that's covered by the rest of the lead there. And what we want to do is adjust our amplifier over here so that we can get our channel number on the MCA to correspond to about one-fourth of the energy. So since these are about 660 keV gamma rays, we want about 165 to be our channel number where those gamma rays peak at. And after we've done that, we've got the calibration in just about the right ballpark, and we get rid of the weak cesium source and put in a multi-source that has anywhere from four to five uh, different radioisotopes in it, which will give us different peaks. And we know what isotopes are in there, so when we get the peaks, we can better adjust our calibration and put all that data into Excel and just do a linear fit. Um, after we've done that, we want to take background counts. So we put all these heavy lead bricks back on here. And we want to cover the entire thing. And it's like that, we should be able to get a few counts, but not very many, and that'll be a pretty accurate background of what's still getting through, but is not coming from the actual source. And then the next thing to do is we remove the bricks again from in front of the source and in front of the aperture, and set that to about an inch there. And we take recordings with this aluminum rod in here, which is like our zero degree measurement here. We run that for about 20 minutes to see how many counts we get and measure the energy. And that energy is going to be our initial energy that we can use for the rest of the experiment because we know when they scatter, they're going to lose a little bit of energy that's going to be transferred to the electrons in the aluminum rod. So we've got that reference point, and now we get to the fun part, which is just basically adjusting <laughs> this thing to different angles. And we want to start at about 20 degrees and then go in 15 degree increments increasing until eventually you can get really far out here. And of course the further you go, the more time it's going to take to get data because your intensity is going to go down. So by the end of the first day, you want to set it up to run for some really large angle, maybe more than 90 degrees, and let that run for several hours. And I'll let Elliot tell you how to analyze your data. All right, we take the data from the MCA and uh, get our photo peak uh, readout. As uh, 
the scattering angle increases, the photo peak will slowly move uh, to different channel numbers. Yeah, uh, and, and that gets you your data. Uh, we take the data, put it into our calibration equation to get the energy of the scattered uh, photons uh, for future plotting, which will give us uh, an uh, output like this one. Uh, going, plotting uh, the energy versus the uh, scattering angle will get us a linear fit uh, that we can then derive our uh, energy of the photons and uh, mass of the electrons uh, from using the Compton formula. With, as the um, angle increases, the, uh, the number of hits would get, go down, as uh, was discussed earlier. There are two models to fit this uh, data, and one of them is a classical model, the other of them is a quantum mechanical model that takes in uh, various corrections in mind. Uh, as uh, shown, the classical model uh, is much higher than the quantum mechanical model, and when the experimental data is plotted against it, it the data fits the quantum mechanical model, thus uh, determining this is a quantum mechanical system.